Welcome guys, this is Ola from Stop New Channel, back with another Life is Strange Before the Storm video. Now, you might recall that two days ago I played Life is Strange Before the Storm episode 3 that was released uh, Tuesday afternoon for me. Straight after playing it, I felt so down and I recorded this short video about my impressions um, about episode 3. If you watched that, you know how down I was at the time, I just didn't feel very well about it about what I saw. I don't really know why, because now I'm feeling a little more optimistic about it all. It's just it brought me down for a couple of days. So much that I didn't really want to wear my Christmas hat today. <laughs> Point is, episode 3 felt very different from first two episodes. For me, first two episodes were based on Chloe and Rachel chemistry. And I loved it so much. I said it, I said it multiple times. It reminded me very much of chemistry of uh, before the Sunset Sunrise trilogy and other, other things. I think they created something precious and something unseen often. So I really want to start by saying this. I love Deck 9 for making Before the Storm. It was such an experience, emotional experience, almost like Life is Strange. Sure, Life is Strange were five episodes long. It had a properly built storyline. The final choice felt more important. It's something that we still discuss. Episode 3 failed in that way, but I do look at this as a whole, so before the storm as an entire game. Considering this, I, find, I found it amazing, 10 out of 10. Mostly because of Rachel, the way she was created. I think De Deck 9 was in a difficult position because they had to play along with something that was already predetermined for them. So they started off knowing that Rachel dies. So do you want to create a character that dies and do you want to make it sort of disliked by people so that it's easier to handle her death? Or do you want to make the best out of it and create an amazing character whose death would be even more tragic? So I love Deck 9 for creating Rachel the way she was, but at the same time I hate them for it because it really hit me hard. It was hard playing. I haven't tried playing Life is Strange yet, but it's going to be different for sure. They influenced this game so much with the prequel, knowing that Rachel and Chloe had this amazing relationship. I'm talking about moments like the train thing, like the Tempest, time they spent together, just the two of them. It was so emotional and something I will never forget. But I felt down because episode three lacked those moments. Also, it lacked logic a bit. There was a lack of logic in the whole Sarah Damon storyline and James. I, I really hated the fact that no matter what choice you pick, it doesn't really change what you see afterwards. Also, the choices that we made before, like do you want to go to Los Angeles or do you want to hit New York? Do you want to go into the open road? It doesn't matter. And it did say that this action will have consequences. It didn't, it didn't. I'm starting to believe this version that they made another story and then they changed it. I made a video about uh, episode 3 spoilers. I still believe this was meant to happen. I don't think it was made up uh, for Chai and Fred. I think it was meant to happen. I think we were meant to see Chloe together in more intimate moments. I think we were meant to see Chloe and Steph talk about Chloe's sexual orientation and stuff like that, about Rachel. I think we were meant to see Rachel choosing if she wants to go away with Sarah or if she wants to stay with Chloe. We were meant to find out about Sarah's supernatural forces and we still don't know. There's so many things that are unanswered. So many things that were meant to have consequences, I just don't see those consequences. So I feel like they changed this episode. I feel like it's something else that it was meant to be. Maybe it was forced a bit. Maybe they were trying to focus on Damon and Sarah too much just enough to make us believe that Before the Storm had uh, some sort of story, but it's just that to me it was perfect that the way it was. I really found it dreadful that Rachel and Chloe were separated for almost the entire episode. But as I said, overall, uh, Before the Storm, I will remember it for my entire life, just like Life is Strange. It definitely changed me, it made me even make those vlogs. But I do want to focus on uh, positives of episode 3. So we saw the first scene, the room scene. I've seen it before because it was pre-released as a footage. I said it in my after episode three down, being down video. I said that uh, it lacked intimacy, but now I'm thinking it didn't uh, because Rachel was down and Chloe was there for her. They hugged. I thought that something more would happen in this scene, but I don't know. Maybe they, well, maybe Deck Nine felt pressured because there's so many fans who were against 
Amber Price as a whole. I don't get it, but apparently they were sort of influencing Deck 9 as well. And I hate that, like, you don't really have to play it, you can play a friend's version. Then we had the junkyard scene. I liked it a lot. Um, I liked it when um, Rachel messaged Chloe saying that something about being a good kisser. I liked that a lot. I liked the fact that Rachel said that Chloe looked hot in her, her new, new, new blue hair. I was gonna say hot. And I, I adored the moment when Rachel attacked Damon. I loved the moment when Rachel attacked Damon to protect Chloe. Just have a look. Don't fucking touch her. But then Rachel got stabbed and it sort of went downwards from this moment. She went to the hospital and, and she was there all the time. Entire episode, probably. I very much liked the conversation that Chloe and Rachel had in the hospital when Chloe said that Steph says hi. If you, if you chose the other option, have a look at this. <laughs> I saw Steph earlier. She says hey. Steph's so cute, but not as cute as you. Stop. I mean it. So I found that great. Uh, it's just, I liked the, I think the whole conversation with Steph and Chloe about Chloe's feelings for Rachel, it was meant to be there. Steph was meant to be the sort of character that you go to if, if you want to talk to someone that you can trust. Uh, it seems like it was built up for nothing because they didn't have this conversation, at least not on screen. And I was waiting for it. And then of course you had the last scene. I mean, it's a compilation of scenes where you can see Chloe and Rachel together doing all this stuff that sort of happened based on Life is Strange. So getting tattoos, uh, signing the wall with their names, Rachel was here, Chloe was here. Then Max intervened with signing her name as well. I enjoyed watching it. Uh, it felt like they were besties. It felt like our cho choice to kiss Rachel was dismissed. It felt like they didn't really have any consequences. I think the only consequence of that last scene of episode 2 was uh, if you prick a bracelet, then you can meet Sarah. I mean, Rachel can meet Sarah. I don't know, I don't care as much. I thought that it would be more. It seems like this last scene, the compilation, was the very same compilation for all the players, regardless of their choices. Even the song was the same, and the song was like, I think it was about best friends, and the title was Bros. But I was happy to see them together doing all this stuff. But at the same time, I felt very down, because I knew that Rachel would die, like everyone knows that. So I finished playing, I even finished recording my Let's Play because I, I, I saw the, you know, the percentage of the choices each player made and I assumed that's it, I assumed that's the end of the game. I turned off recording and then they hit me. It was honestly like a truck run over me or something, as if someone punched me in the face. And suddenly I was like... And my poor Shiba's heart stopped beating. I didn't like it at all. We know that Rachel dies, um, but it's just that I liked Rachel so much. I don't know, when you're watching a movie, when you're watching a TV show and reading a book, whatever, you get used to those characters, especially if the main protagonist. You get used to them, you get to like them, you get to know them, you get attached. Obviously Rachel dies, we know it but this was unnecessary. When I saw the 17 missed calls, my heart was broken. I just felt so down because of it, hence the video I made afterwards. It felt like it didn't need to be there, it felt unnecessary. Maybe I would respond to the episode better if this wasn't there. But overall, the entire episode felt like it was a bit rushed. And like I said, so many questions uh, are left without answers, like, what was the raven about? I think I'm starting to complain too much. Overall, as an entire game, I loved it. I understand that they had to cut the loose ties and answer some questions, but it's just, I don't feel like this was the thing that they should have focused on. Even if you don't want to look at Amber Price, even if you just want to look at this as an adventure episode, it still wasn't the best. I feel like if someone decided to play along with time changing thing, time travel, uh, different universes stuff, 
I feel like it could have been done into something that could have had a continuation. Some sort of Before the Storm Season 2 or something. Maybe even sort of influenced Rachel's death. I mean, I know it's far-fetched. I've been trying to think of a way to save Rachel, but I don't really see it, logically speaking. But maybe someone smarter than me would have thought of it and maybe they would have found a way. And also, have you seen the look that Frank gave Rachel? I know what you did there, Deck Nine. <laughs> I've been talking to different people about this. There's so many people not happy with that episode, I think. But as I said, like, I feel awkward saying this because there's so many people that I love at Deck Nine. They're always responding to my tweets, letting us know about stuff. They're awfully nice. I don't want to make it seem like I'm ungrateful for Before the Storm because this couldn't be further away from the truth. I just felt like the episode was changed. I feel like somewhere out there in Deck 9 there could be a version of episode 3 that we would all love. I, I just don't know why we didn't get it. I tweeted them, I asked them if they would release some unused materials or footage, but I, I don't think they will. <laughs> I will be making more videos about this, I'm sure. I think I'm gonna make one about Rachel Amber. I thought we would get more answers about Rachel, her supernatural powers. Some people still claim that she was manipulated. I don't think she's manipulated. I want to make a video about Rachel, possibly discuss what I think happened between Life is Strange Before the Storm and Life is Strange, because honestly, based on those last scenes, I think I'm getting an idea of what happened there. I'm not sure if I'm on the right track. I'm gonna have to think about it some more. Right now we're waiting for Life is Strange 2. Hopefully we'll get to meet new characters that we will love as much. Right now it's hard to imagine really, because Chloe, Rachel, even Max, these are my absolute favorites, but I believe they will make something amazing as well. I really gotta play some cheerful games because this brought me down a bit. So if you like this video, please subscribe, uh, leave a thumbs up. Uh, this was Ola from Stop Me O channel. There's plenty other videos coming these days, so stay tuned.